the testing tools that are out there today, how can those be adapted to testing the cloud infrastructure? Well, some don't fit at all. Some work, some don't. If you look at like a traditional load testing, like a Mercury load runner or now HP load runner, that wouldn't work just because by cloud you're scaling up the number of connections. So you need to test cloud to cloud. You would need a large number of servers to test the large number of servers. So that wouldn't probably work out very well. Other tools, such as tools from uh, the Bit Blasters, you know, the ones and zeros companies like Spire, Nixia, Agilent, all those kind of tools, uh, they wouldn't get through the cloud because they won't route through a real network because they're not real traffic. So I don't think there really is any cloud testing tools in that regard in terms of performance of load testing. I mean, there certainly are for security and things, but definitely not for load running. Okay. If you were going to test cloud infrastructure using Breaking Point Elite, mm -hmm. what, what about that product actually allows you to do that today? Uh, two things. One, it, it can do the client emulation, um, similar to LoadRunner, uh, but on a grander scale, 7.5 million connections concurrently. It would be a lot of LoadRunner servers. That would be a, uh, you think, let me do the math on that. That would be a tremendous number. As you're talking about 65,000 servers or some odd number like that. I mean, that would be a huge number of servers. So, um, as for the other side, of course, it's we can do application level traffic. I mean, that's our, our thing. That's what we started about. So, having all the different apps helps where you wouldn't be able to do that traditionally with the ones and zeros companies. Okay. So, so all the different apps. Let's take the first part. You know, the throughput, the performance first. Okay. What about the? Is that the network processors? Is that the? What is it about that that well, actually so allows that to happen? Well, it's not just one thing. I mean, it, yeah, it is the MPs. The MPs help a lot. And it's FPGAs, they help a lot too. And it's the control software that helps a lot. Really, when you're testing something like that, you get in these complexities. So if I was testing an Ethernet controller, for say, uh, per se, a uh, ones and zeros company would work out pretty good. But really, it would be better if we could do framing, which they do, and different things like that. Uh, now, that's great for testing the Ethernet controller. And if I was, let's say, um, testing some software, it would be great if I took... Internet Explorer and pointed it to the web server and tested it. Well, that'd be great for that. We really need a combination of the two. And one's pretty detailed, high high level, but it's got lots of tech behind it. And the other one is real basic tech, and you kind of need to merge the two forces together. And that's really unique because you need a lot of ease of use. In both cases, they're both easy to use. One hides everything from you, and and one removes everything from you. Um, if, a person, if you could say that. And so you need that combination. So it's all about reporting and giving to you in the right way, because on cloud you care about everything. You care about the network infrastructure, the latency, the performance, the transactions. So you do care about what starts from ones and zeros that goes all the way to the browser. You care about everything in the middle, really. And that's a whole different product. It's just not MPs, though they're a huge factor for performance in our case. But it can be done different ways. But it's really, uh, it's really the combination. The architecture, I guess you would say. Right. So let's talk about the second part of um, the comment around the realistic applications. If Let's just say you're going to go out and test an infrastructure for cloud computing today. What are the applications that you would use, kind of baseline? Oh, probably the most important would be the database applications. Uh, the Microsoft SQL, uh, MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, uh, things of that nature. I would, um, only because that usually tends to be your bottleneck. If you think about all the applications you're using, the you know the web pages are just a bunch of stuff web pages, but chances are pretty good you you're talking to some back end that's getting the customer's data, the shopping cart data, or the MLS system. I mean, when you shop for a house, how often did you search realtor.com? I mean, I was on it a lot, right? I I probably <laughs> cost them a few licenses right there myself. Or automated search tools to figure out who my neighbors were if I moved in that area. I mean, I did everything. So that's pretty abusive. Um, the other one would. Other than that, would, would probably be the, uh, you know, the web-based protocols are pretty important. Um, the chat and things of that nature, they're interesting. A lot of times you'll have customer service apps doing that things. But I, I think the databases are, could probably win out. Mm -hmm. Okay. When we talk about cloud, obviously one of the words that comes up is elasticity. Obviously extremely important when it comes to cloud computing. Sure. How can testing tools, in particular Breaking Point Elite, but also just in general help kind of the QA folks keep up in such a dynamic environment? Well, that's twofold. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'll answer the question because I don't know which question you're asking, so I'll, I'll ask to the elasticity of the servers themselves. I mean, you got to worry about that because as you bring up and down resources, you cause contention with the existing resources, right? So as you add VMware or servers to it, VMs or servers, you, you, you come into problems, right? If you bring up too fast, they're all busy loading up the VMs. They're not busy processing traffic. And how they do that, how you shut load, and that, that's one thing. You definitely need a tool like that some load testing to, to figure that out. Um, and then 
you need a, an architecture like ours. Ours is a good fit for that because we add applications every week. And so you probably might come up with something new. Like, uh, like example, we had AIM, uh, you know, the old Oscar protocol in our product. But people wanted AIM 6. Uh, AIM 6 works completely different than traditional AIM. you got the key server and all that jazz. So there's like three different protocols underneath it, how you do things. So, so yeah, you need someone that can add the apps quickly because chances are you're probably using the latest tools and latest things. I know you use like Joomla or Jambalaya or something like that for your, your thing while everybody else uses WordPress. I mean, the tools move on, right? Everybody changes. And before that was PHP or, you know, and Perl and all the different things. So as you change. I imagine security is this kind of same thing. Oh, absolutely. Right? I mean, the threats change constantly, right? right? If you depend on one type of service then, or, or software package, then you got to make sure it's secure. Right. Exactly. Yeah, and that moves constantly, right? Mm. Yeah. Um, last question that I had, and it kind of goes into this, but making changes on the fly, being able to do that. What are the things inside Breaking Point Elite that you think allow people to do that more quickly or easily? Well, that's ease of use. I mean, just to make a change and not have to worry about the ripple effects uh, or, or see the ripple effects if you want to. That, that's probably a big thing. Like, if you look at a load runner, it's a really good tool, by the way. If you look at it, though, it's... Uh, it takes a while to make a change, right? You have to redo all your automation and redo your scripts. And if you look at something like the, the BitBlasters of the world, you, know, you have to change every single packet for every single stream. And that's just, that takes too long. Both of them take too long. You want something that can be a quick change, like change the URL or change the select statement and just type in the select statement and have a nice day. So hiding the, the protocols and leaving the meat of the protocol out for you, you know, just like, hey, this is the nugget you really care about. And exposing mm -hmm. just those fields is, is probably something, something we work on really a lot. We used, sometimes we even have two versions of protocols. Like we have POP3 and POP3 Advanced. So POP3 has got your login name, your password, and some other stuff. And POP3 Advanced has all the other settings you might have. Same thing with IMAP. We have the same thing in DNS. So that you can have the basic version and the, oh my god, I really want to do everything version. Right. To give them that. Okay. So that's pretty and important. obviously some of the automation aspects of the tool. Yeah, absolutely. Like that go into that. Yeah. All right, great. Being able to read the stats of the servers, especially with MIB stats, so you know, we can do that. Go out S N P and browse the MIP sets yeah. and see how often, how many transactions the, the VM actually handled and how many packets came in and, and all that jazz and figure out what load really is so that when you add another server, you know how much load it can actually handle. Not just based on CPU and memory, but on networking as well. Mm -hmm.